Well, what's it mean to you not just to have three go in the top ten rounds, but three pitchers? Well, you know, we're, we're really glad for them and their families, the hard work and effort they put in. Uh, a lot of credit goes to a lot of people, you know, all my coaching staff and the recruiting process of being able to recruit good players here and then from us being able to put them in a good pitching system and watch them grow and mature and develop uh, and now be able to be selected and then now hopefully get in the minor leagues and get an opportunity to live out a, a boyhood dream to try to play in the big leagues. You expected to lose Hogan, I'm sure, but uh, when you lose Nick as well, how does that impact you going forward? Well, we're prepared for that. We, we always believe that um, the guys that we ID that can possibly go above the 10th round, it's very hard to keep juniors. It just is. It's not something that shocks us. Um, I think we've kept one junior in my 25 years here, Rick Idell. It's it's you know last year I, I don't think one senior got over seventy five thousand dollars in the draft. So because of that, uh, it's going to be very hard to keep juniors. So you prepared for that. Um, having Gunner stay was a, a real shock because usually the juniors go. So uh, Gunner's the second guy, I guess now that we were able to keep. But very rarely do we keep juniors. So we prepared for them to move on. You expect to have any other guys drafted? I think Colton should go. Um, we're, we're hoping and praying for him. He deserves it. Um, so hopefully we can get him selected. Those are the four guys that we thought would get drafted. Um, so he's the last one that we're waiting on to see what will happen. What do you mean to you to see Hogan go as high as he did? Uh, it, you know, it's good. You know, I've never had a first rounder, so you, you, you want to try to get him out as high as you can. That's our goal for them financially, and not just financially, but also the investment that the organization makes in them so that they'll keep them around long enough. So so we're glad for that. You know, Darren Babineau, I caught Darren in my first year here when I got here um, and as a second rounder. And then BT, I think, got him by, I think, one slot. But, um, you know, it, it's good. We want them to go as high as they can because, again, it's, it's somewhat of a, a, a better chance for them to get to the big leagues. But we're glad would any of them get drafted because at the end of the day, I mean, there's only roughly 1,300 people that get drafted. So you've got to really think about this. You know, we create such a big thing about the money and the hierarchy, but when you really think about it, only 13 people, 1,300 people are going to get a chance to do something in the whole world. So you have a very, very um, limited group of people that can stand up on a mound and throw a pitch low and away at 92 to 95 miles an hour and then repeat that 100 times in a game. There's not many people have that opportunity. So I'm, I'm glad they got that opportunity. When you talk about Colton Schmidt, the one guy of the, the four that's still sitting there, um, how much does this season, um, the season that he had being the Sun Belt Pitcher of the Year, show um, his determination and how much does he deserve that moment once it comes? Well, you know, out of JC, he was like 10 and 1 and pitched his team to a national championship. But the draft is not real big out of junior colleges. Um, so, you know, his junior year, which was his biggest year, he ended up injured. So, you know, that was a setback for him and barely got to pitch towards the end of the season. I don't think the scouts were able to, you know, appreciate what he can do. They saw him probably in junior college, the ones that did see him. But then they didn't see him his junior year. So uh, I think he'll go, um, just a matter of where. But I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad for him because he had that setback and then he was able to come back from that setback. From a recruiting perspective, when you, you market the program, do you tell people about necessarily where someone got drafted in the past or is it more marketable to say, you know, here's what somebody's doing in the minors or here's what somebody's doing in the, in the major? Well, the big thing is, is in the recruiting process, we tell them all the time, we want you to play through us and not to us. Um, I don't really like signing a kid that gets to college and goes, man, I, I reached my dream. You know, that scares me. Uh, we want him to play through us and not to us. And so we want him to get here. We want him to move on into professional baseball. But the problem with it is we don't want their athletic mission to undermine the athletic mission while they're here. So we have to make sure we balance both of them. These, all these guys have done a good job. They're going to get to CSP in their contracts, which means the college tuition program, the scholarship plan. So their, their guys are not going to run out on their education. But it is important for us uh, to have these guys go out and ultimately hopefully do good in the minors 
and then maybe get to the big leagues because it gives us a chance when we're sitting with a kid as we are this year and every year in the recruiting process and being able to show him why you should come to college because you can you can double or triple the money that you were offered out of high school if they were a lower round pick. Speaking of the recruiting process, uh, are you worried about any of the kids you signed uh, this fall? Well, the, the, the big thing that you have to watch out for when you say worry, there's a, a couple different kind of worries. Uh, there's one of how of which guy could go the highest. Um, and that's the outfielder from Hattiesburg, you know, Dexter. He's the one that could possibly go the highest. We're in right now, I think, the latter part of the ninth round, so they've got one more round to go, and then we'll see what happens, you know, tomorrow. And then you've got the ones that could slide lower and then maybe panic and, and sign. Uh, so there's, 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 there's kind of different worries when you, when you deal with them. And it just depends on where they, where they go in the draft and then how much do they like school. All their backgrounds are different. Some of them, their finances are different. The parents don't have a lot of money. Uh, the kids not really care about education. Well, he's going to go on you a lot quicker than a guy that really cares about his education and has a mother and a father that put a premium on education over athletics. So you're dealing with a lot of things uh, with each different kid. But I think the guy that has a chance to go the highest would be Dexter. But then they could slide if they're speaking about going to college. Um, so it just depends the, the dialogue that the kid and the family's having with the scout. Did, did Colton surprise you by everything he was able to accomplish, or did you figure he had that, you know? No, I mean, um, you know, we, we, we felt he was good. When we got him, we were so happy because we didn't know if we could get him out of the junior college. He came from a great junior college, and San Jacinto Junior College plays for national championships a year, and, and uh, he pitched him to the national championship. He was 10-1. and one. So we were very fortunate to get him here. The ultimate problem is, is he ran into that injury and that oblique strain and never really was the same. Got to pitch a little bit towards the end of last season. But what I'm glad for him is, you know, we always talk about the work while you wait. We always talk about being able to handle adversity that you can't pick when adversity shows up, but you can pick how you can respond to it. This guy hangs a breaking ball, gives up a grand slam that, you know, doesn't let us potentially get to a regional last year. And then this year he pitches us you know, in every place possible to get us where we needed to be. And then hopefully he can cap that off with being drafted. And I mean, what a, what a great feat. You know, if you'd have talked to him when he hung that breaking ball last year and we were on the way back to that hotel for that long bus ride to get back here, knowing that we just got knocked out of a tournament on a hanging breaking ball, and then now he's maybe going to be drafted, I think that's just a great opportunity for him. And we're real pleased of the hard work and the effort that he did when he came back into his senior year. And kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, Logan Stokey coming to this year wasn't expected. He was expected to have a big role, but not necessarily closer um, for him to work the way that he did and to put mm -hmm. himself in the position to get drafted. What did that say about his uh, work in my life? Well, again, you know, he, he worked while he waited. He stayed there and worked. And when the door opened for him, he was prepared. You know, we say this all the time. Most people sit down and stop working until the door opens. And the door opens and they're not ready. He, he stayed working. And, and he had every reason to sit down. You know, I mean, and at bat here and at bat there. Pitched a little bit here. His freshman year was a, was a, was a position player. And then... <laughs> just didn't didn't really get going on either side back and forth and all of a sudden you know we, we, we sat with him and talked to him about pitching with Gunner going down and and everything else that we really need you to to maybe lean more to the pitching side and then he finally just put the bat down and became a, a pitcher only and when he did that I think his velocity jumped I think his pitchability jumped because he was spending more time he was lifting as a pitcher now not a position player and then uh, the door opened for him and uh, he was ready. So uh, he's got a great body. Yeah, the players will tell you this. Coaches will tell you this. He, he's probably the best athlete on our team. I mean, can dunk a basketball uh, with the best of them. I mean, he's full of quick twitch muscle fiber. Um, he, he, he's, he's, he's really a good athlete. But it's never really, you know, kind of worked for him in the hitting side and the pitching side was, was kind of left a little dormant because he was trying to hit. And that last year, I think, when he dropped the bat down and said, I'm going to pitch, and then stepped in as a closer role to help us with Demo's situation, 
Um, you know, he was ready. He was prepared. The door opened, and I'm just so glad he's getting rewarded for for the for the work and while he waited. In terms of um, just you talking about doing multiple things, pitching and, and, and batting, um, how hard is that? Like the kid on the Angels is doing that right now. Do you think you're going to see more and more of that? Well, really. I, I, I well, I think two way guys are tough because they spend a lot of time down with a sore arm. Um, you know, he's got a very lean body and probably can maybe handle that workload. I think the difference is going to be is over time, what's going to happen over time because you constantly are training as a hitter and then you're constantly training as a pitcher and you're swinging the bat and you're throwing. So over time, you know, there can be a toll that somebody takes on their body. They really got to be a good athlete. Stokey was a real good athlete and this kid is a real good athlete. And then what was it like for you seeing um, Danny pitch? I mean, I'll throw out the first pitch the other day. That was big, you know, to see his family wrapped around him and uh, to see all the, the, the his surgeons and all the people that supported him all back behind the mound and have him walk out there was, was really good to see when you realize that, you know, you were five minutes away from maybe death and now you're walking back out and throwing the first pitch in front of everybody that were praying for you. And that's the power of prayer. And... I'm just so glad that Daniel was able to do that. And then next year, it's going to be even more special to watch him take the mound for real and not just throw out a, a ceremonial first pitch. And then what will you guys do in the offseason just to have that sense of urgency at the beginning of the season that, that you thought you guys didn't have this year? Well, the big thing is, is we, we, you know, it's a pattern for us. You now get out recruiting. You wait to see what goes through the draft. And then from there, you get back out and just try to overcome, you know, some of the injuries that we had this year. You can't protect yourself from injuries they happen but we'll be getting some of those guys back our leadership will be back guys that we had to take off the field that were premium leaders so now we get we get all that back so I'm looking forward to the fall and the other thing I wanted to know